I'm sure you've all seen the videos of cruise ships rolling around. A lot of the time this is down to a failure in one of their systems, the stabilizers. So how do these stabilizers actually work? Let's consider a standard cruise ship. In calm water, she's going to sit happily upright. Her stability is determined by her centre of gravity and her centre of buoyancy. As long as they're all lined up in the correct place, she's going to remain upright and stable. If you then introduce some waves to the sea, she's going to start to interact a bit. Smaller waves are unlikely to have much of an impact on a large ship, but as the wave size increases, the wave length increases, and you're going to start to feel the ship interacting. She's going to roll from side to side, following the rhythm of the wave itself. And this is purely down to the fact that as the water level on one side of the ship rises, the ship generates more buoyancy on that side, and this results in a force that makes her lean over. Most of the time a ship will happily just continue riding the waves, rolling gently from side to side. The only exception of course is synchronous rolling, and that's when the frequency of the wave matches the natural frequency of the ship's roll. This results in rapidly increasing angles of roll until the ship actually capsizes. Apart from that, gentle rolling isn't an issue on most ships, but on a cruise ship, you expect to be able to have a flute of champagne stay put on a table when you put it down. You don't want the ship to be rolling underneath you, spilling your drink everywhere. Instead, these ships use stabilizers to minimize that rolling. We want the ship to remain upright while the waves run underneath her. The goal of a stabilizer is to counter the force generated by a wave. Unfortunately, that force isn't constant. As the crest of the wave hits one side of the ship, the tipping force is at its maximum. As the wave crest moves through the center line, the force becomes pretty much zero, and then as it moves to the other side, again the force becomes a maximum, but in the other direction. The stabilizer needs to counter all of that. It needs to be able to change the amount of force it generates, depending on the exact location of the wave, which of course is constantly changing. To do that, the industry has come up with a few types of stabilizer. I'm going to split them into two categories, active and passive. A good example of passive stabilizers are bilge keels. These are protrusions on the bilges of a hull, and all they effectively do is dampen any roll. They generate turbulence as they move up and down. To have any effect, they need to apply a force. As they're passive, they can only generate that force when the ship is rolling anyway. Bilge keels are okay at dampening a roll, and they're very cheap to install, so they're a popular design feature on many ships. Unfortunately, they don't do enough to produce the required counter effect that we need on a cruise ship. Another method of stabilization is passive anti-roll tanks. These are tanks installed in the extremes of the ship's breadth. The key to these is in the design of the crossover pipes. Normally, with the ship upright, they're gonna have the same amount of fluid on each side. As the ship leans over one way, the fluid in the low side is going to increase. If you can control the flow of fluid enough, you can have the maximum amount of weight in that side as the wave moves across the ship. Theoretically, if you keep the fluid there while the wave crest is there, it can help to counter the roll. Of course, you need to release it to let it flow to the other side at just the right time so that it's ready to counter the next wave crest as that approaches. You can add in more control onto these tanks, making them semi-active. Or you can even add in a set of pumps, controlled by a gyroscopic stabilization system that can pump water across whenever it's needed. This would be a fully active system, and these sort of stabilizers are good on ships. They would work okay on cruise ships as they can actively counter the force of the roll as it's happening. Unfortunately, it does take time to pump water across, so you still haven't achieved instant stabilization. For that, we're left with the fin stabilizer. This is actually the most common form of stabilization that I've encountered on cruise ships. The system basically consists of a hydraulically operated wing that extends out underwater. You'll notice it looks similar to the bilge keels that we discussed earlier. The main difference is that with these active fins, you can change the angle of attack. Looking at the side profile of a fin, you'll see what happens when it rotates. Turn it one way and the water flow will produce a huge force in one direction. Turn it the other way and you've instantly swapped the direction of that force. 
With the correct gyroscopic control, you just need to rotate the fin in such a way that it counters the force generated by the wave that is trying to roll the ship. Indeed, you can even use it to counter a roll generated by other forces, like wind or even internal movement of people or cargo. The main disadvantage of these fins though, is that they're only going to work while the ship is actually moving. They need a water flow across them. Below a certain speed, often about 6 knots, that water flow is not actually enough to generate a sufficient writing force. Luckily, most cruise ships have a minimum speed, well above this anyway, so it's not actually an issue when they're on passage. This is why cargo ships, with their generally slower speeds, don't typically install active fin stabilisation. Saying that, there are container vessels that do, but only ones where their typical cruising speeds are high enough to get the maximum benefit. So, next time you're sipping your champagne in a high sea, just spare a thought to the technology that's going into keeping your glass from sliding off the table. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. For more videos like this every other Friday, be sure to subscribe right here on the channel. Until next time, thank you for watching, and goodbye.